I want to tell you a story. The first time I said I loved was in the back seat of a 1997 Champagne Toyota Camry with both back seat windows down. That was the only way my horizontal body could lay in it. The woman that I was seeing said that she loved men in uniform, so I was wearing some remnants of a Boy Scout uniform. <laughs> I was never very good at subtlety or sexiness. We had driven in our desire to the very back of an under construction suburban construction zone. The houses were done, the power was not turned on. We had parked in the garage of one of these houses. There was no security, no running water, and no problem in our eyes. I knew nothing about the female physique or about intimacy, but as we made love, I got into it, night fell, there was no light. It was like the sixth scene of a horror porno film. <laughs> As I gazed up, after having said, I love you, for the first time in my life, I looked at the door that would eventually lead from the garage to the kitchen, and in my horrific imagination saw a future resident of the home standing there, staring at present me with horror and future me was staring at present me with horror that this was happening in the garage and I was no good at this. Not that I was bad at the sex, but that I didn't really love her. I agonized over that event for years, having said that I loved someone when I didn't. I went to college soon after. When I came back years later and drove by that suburban residential development, I found that it had collapsed in the recession and had been torn down for a wildlife refuge. That's love. Um, many years later, I was the only one that knew my marriage was doomed. Everyone else understood, um, but had refused to tell me. <laughs> I knew that it was doomed because I cared far too much. And when you really, truly love for someone that you find yourself on a St. Andrew's cross night after night in a crowded nightclub looking just across the way at where your wife is servicing and being serviced by people that she has never met. That's love. Several years later as I was thinking about the answer to the question that prompted us all to join tonight, my grandfather passed away and in a very cinematic fashion I thought of the first time that I had said I loved him and the last. It was over Christmas, and uh, I knew that it was going to be the last time. I knew there was, there was not going to be another time I would see him face to face, and that I would say that I loved him. And I couldn't remember in those final moments of Christmas whether I had said it in a way that he had heard it. So we were out the door, we were getting in the car. I forgot my cell phone, which was in my pocket. Ran back in, turned the corner, said, I love you. And he had fallen asleep, that's love. Uh, there's a psychological concept called the via negativa where you try to find what something is by deciding what it is not. I fascinate at that concept, but it just simply does not work with love. All three of the stories I just told you, I intended to show as, as via negativas, as examples of not love, and yet they, they all are. Love is tone-deaf cries of deafening tone. It's a sort of vivisection to avoid being alone. It's having a bone to pick when you've lost the bone. It's every colon colon analogy, every stupid analogy you can associate it with. The most recent time I said I loved you was this morning as she left the room. I'm going to try really hard. Love is the scab being peeled, it's the skin falling to the ground and the pink growth underneath. It's very, very sexy. <laughs> it's the only thing we have that is bigger than the nothingness. And that is what I think love is. Wow.